All right, Jen Springer here, jenspringer.com and livegreen.solutions. Let's talk about candida. Oh my gosh, I see stuff on Facebook and YouTube and all over the place on the internet, on all these blogs and websites about candida and how to detox candida and de the candida cleanses and all this stuff. And I'm just gonna say a few things about candida. One is it will never go away unless you handle the core uh, issues that cause candida. Now, first of all, candida is not the devil. Hot tip news for you. Candida is not the devil. However, it is meant to be in your body in a yeast form in your large intestine. Okay, it's a scavenger, cleans things up. You want it there in the yeast format at the appropriate levels. However, in certain circumstances, this candida can go from the yeast form to the fungal form and it takes over, can get in your organs, in your glands, in your tissues, cause pain and inflammation and foggy head and autoimmune issues and things like Hashimoto's thyroiditis and rheumatoid arthritis. Anything with an itis on it can be linked back to candida. Sleep problems, weight gain, hormones, I mean all of this stuff, you know, can be blamed on candida. So let's talk about the causes and why it's there because there's a million things you can find on how to kill it or bring it down. Like I said, you can't totally kill it out of your body. You just got to bring it into normal levels. So how, how, what do you look at in order to make sure that you're getting to the root issue? Because if you don't, the candida will keep coming back over and over and over and over and over for decades. Ask me how I know this. I have done every candida cleanse like 40 times and I could tell you that it comes back. <laughs> so, all right, so we all know that if your gut doesn't have enough probiotics, blah, 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 you're gonna have candida, you know, indigestion of food causes um, food allergies, blah, 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 right? Well, there's something that underlies before that. And the first thing that most people miss with candida when they're treating it is they do not restore the appropriate pH of the stomach, which is your hydrochloric acid levels. You know, your pH of your stomach is supposed to be like two or three, um, two to four really. And if you don't get to that low pH level, your stomach, you know, you're, you eat your food and then you get your stomach over here. I can jump up and show you. Your stomach, um, is supposed to get this low pH from, you know, from um, the little parietal cells in there. And then these little ions move around and you got, you know, um, hydrochloric acid, which is a very good thing. So when you have acidity in, in your gut and you get like GERD and reflux, it's actually um, not low stomach acid or, uh, yeah, that's actually low stomach acid, not high stomach acid. And they give you like proton pump inhibitors and make your stomach acid even lower. And then you get a lot of weird things linked to Alzheimer's and dementia and um, nutrient deficiencies and etc. So the first thing that happens in your stomach when your pH is really low is it catalyzes bile flow which the bile will emulsify your fats, um, also linked to fat soluble vitamins. You know, if you have nutrient panels done and you're low in fat soluble vitamins, you're not getting this emulsification happening. Um, the, low, uh, the low pH also triggers the pancreas to secrete enzymes, which help digest your food. So first things first, the biggest thing with digestion before any supplements uh, other than hydrochloric, betaine HCL is actually what it's called, betaine, B-E-T-A-I-N-E HCL. Anything before that, um, enzymes and probiotics and, you know, herbs and bitters and all that is getting your pH to this low level. So you can do herbs that help restore the pH. You can, some people do, um, they call it a ginger pickle. You can do betaine HCL. I prefer betaine HCL because it's simple and it's easy. But, and then from that point, your food is also, when your pH is that low, is sterilized so that any like funky food critters in there that would cause uh, foodborne illness are taken care of. Also that sets the stage, you know, your stomach is acidic, your small intestine is alkaline, your large intestine is acidic. So that change in pH as we go through the digestive process starts with that stomach. And if that doesn't happen, the rest of it doesn't go well. So your SIBO, um, small intestine bacterial overgrowth issues that people are getting and it's like part of this whole, like it's just this crazy stuff, um, is 
linked to low HCL, okay? People have low probiotic in their stomach or good bacteria, you know, all your ophyluses, right? And, you know, lactobacillus and um, you've got all these things that are, you know, supposed to grow in there naturally to help your, you know, beneficial bacteria. And those don't get, you um, catalyzed either and grow if the environment isn't acidic enough. Acidophilus means acid loving. So you've got to have that in the appropriate, you know, pH in order for that good stuff to grow. So this is this is what happens, you know, and your so your food gets sterilized, um, your gallbladder and your enzymes are working properly, your good bacteria are growing because you've got the appropriate pH of your you're beginning with your stomach. So the stomach thing is the first thing that's missed often with candida. Keeps candida in check having in that pH where it needs to be. Second thing is estrogen dominance or estrogen imbalance. You know, I don't always want to say dominance because that's like a buzzword, but many people like myself over time, you know, as you start to go through the change of life or for whatever reason and whatever's going on with you, your, um, you know, your test um, testosterone may be low, your progesterone may be low, your estrogen might be high, you might have environmental estrogen toxins in your body that your body's not eliminating properly and your, your body can be what we call estrogen dominant. Well, estrogen dominant creates high estrogen creates high blood sugar high insulin levels and so what happens with that you've got you know blood sugar levels that are higher higher insulin levels you get extra fat storage and you also get you have the sugar in your blood in order to, for the the yeast to feed on it's like yeast food right so yeast loves sugar. I mean, like think about when you make bread, you take the yeast and you put it in the warm water, you activate it and you put it in the bread, it eats it, it gets puffy. Well, the same thing happens to us when we have too much insulin, too high blood sugar related to estrogen and also low thyroid will be part of that too. Um, high blood sugar is related to low thyroid and also low adrenals, but getting a little complicated. I just want to make sure we hit estrogen. The third thing is the thyroid that people miss. Candida likes to overgrow, and so do other critters, as we like to call them, when the when the um, the body temperature is not optimal at 98.6. When your body is running at 97.5 or 97 or 96.8, you know you're not getting up to your optimum body temperature. You will have critter overgrowth. You know, candida is kept in check by that optimal heat in your body. It kind of cooks it off, right? That's why we get fevers when we get a pathogen in our body. Our body spikes up in the blood sugar. I mean, the the body temperature in order to kill off. You know, the little bugs that are making you sick. Same with candida. If your body's operating at you know lower levels than normal, then you will not cook off that candida, and it's going to overgrow. So so the first thing is I talked about was low stomach acid. Second thing is um, the estrogen. <laughs> I lost train of thought. Third thing is thyroid. So when your thyroid is low, your thyroid is off, your body temperature is not going to be optimal. You're also, when you're low thyroid, you're not going to be making enough hydrochloric acid either because it takes so much juice, you know, so much energy in the body to make it. That's where the body will cut corners with low thyroid. So with low thyroid, you get low HCL. See how those things like feed together? And you also get a suboptimal body temperature, which will not kill off the candida either. And so you've got these three things that, you know, will create an environment where you'll never get rid of it. You might bring the levels lower and then it comes back. And then it, you know, it keeps like this vicious cycle. So make sure you address those three things. Well, just like six, but three things. Make sure you get those three things addressed. And then I wish that to hear from you to let me know if you have those, um, the recurrent candida back under control back into yeast form, okay? So anyways, this is Jen Springer. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, let me know how you're doing. Uh, leave comments, and uh, if I can get to these questions, I do. Sometimes I can't, because I got all these videos up here. But anyways, I hope to uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.